One small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. On July 20th, 1969, Apollo 11 landed on the moon. Getting there was already a monumental achievement in science, but being on the moon offered scientists a whole new frontier for research. The Apollo 11 crew deployed several experiments on the moon, studying everything from its surface to the solar winds. 50 years later, only one of those experiments is still operating, the laser ranging retro reflector, which was developed at Jilla by Dr. James Fowler using a simple tool called corner cubes. This is actually one of the lunar corner cubes. It is absolutely gorgeous. This side is flat. The other side, the back side, is three flat surfaces all perpendicular to one another. I've always said it's like the Mona Lisa of optics because in the Mona Lisa, no matter where you stand in the little, she, it looks like she's looking at you. Here, you can see your eyeball if you get really good and look careful. And over there, they can see the eyeball. And that's the beautiful. And so when pulse lasers came out, got the first giant pulse laser, I thought, you know, you look at how many photons come out. And then you say, well, gee, if you would shoot that at the moon, and then you had a, an array of corner cubes up there, which will send the light right back on itself. Why you could measure, you could, you could see the return signal on the earth. And if you could do that, then you sit there with a watch and you time it and you time the round trip time. And that gives you the earth moon distance in terms of the speed of light. We were literally looking at a pulse going out and some sort of a version of that pulse coming back. And it wasn't uh, hugely sophisticated. It was simple physics, simple electronics, almost simple optics, but carried out over an enormous distance. It may be a simple experiment, but with lunar ranging, we can now measure the distance to the moon within a millimeter, which over the last 50 years helped confirm a key part of Einstein's theory of general relativity. What counts in lunar ranging is not the distance. What counts is changes over time on that range. Gravity is really small. And so the amount of gravitational energy that's contained in this is not enough to get excited about. And you'd never see it change because I took it away or put it back. It's just not enough. You need big objects. Well, you've got big objects now. You've got the Earth and the Moon both falling toward the Sun. So lunar ranging lets you actually measure this free fall of the Moon and the Earth toward the sun and answer the question, do they fall at the same rate? And the good news is, or this, Einstein wouldn't be surprised, but it's sort of good news, is that they do, just like all other kinds of energy and matter. Studying those changes helps scientists understand how gravity affects objects orbiting the Earth, including how gravity affects time. That information is crucial for GPS technology, which needs to account for that slight drift in time in order to perfectly calculate your position. So without those corner cubes on the moon, you might still be driving around with a paper map.